Our course title is 20th Century English Poetry Program BS English 8th Semester. Our course code is 4139 and my name is Samina Bishi. Uh, let's start with the introduction of Seema Zhine who is the second poet in our course outline. Let's start. Seema Zhine whose complete name is Seamus Justin Hine was born in 13 April 1939 while died on 30th August 2013. He was an Irish poet, playwright and translator. Hine received the 1995 Nobel Prize in Literature. Among his best known works is Death of a Naturalist, which was published in 1966, and this was his first major published volume. Hine was recognized as one of the principal contributors to poetry during his lifetime. American poet Robert Lowell described him as the most important Irish poet since Yeats and many others, including the academic John Sutherland, have said that he was the greatest poet of our age. Another poet, Robert Pinks, has stated that with his wonderful gift of eye and ear, Hine has the gift of the storyteller. Upon his death in 2013, the Independent described him as probably the best known poet in the world. Seamus Hine's Initial Life Hine was born in the townland of Tamiern between Kessel, Dawson and Tume Bridge, Northern Ireland. His family moved to nearby Balagay when he was a boy. He became a lecturer at St. Joseph's College in Belfast in the early 1960s after attending Queen's University and began to publish poetry. He lived in Sandy Mount, Dublin from 1976 until his death. He lived part-time in the United States from 1981 to 2006. Hine's Recognitions and Awards Hine was a professor at Harvard from 1981 to 1997 and its poet in residence from 1988 to 2006. From 1989 to 1994, he was also the professor of poetry at Oxford. Other awards that he received include the Jeffrey Pepper Memorial Prize in 1968, the E.M. Forrester Award 1975, the Penn Translation Prize in 1985, the Golden Wreath of Poetry in 2001, the T.S. Eliot Prize in 2006, and two White Bridge Prizes in 1996 and 1999 subsequently. In 2011, he was awarded the Griffin Poetry Prize and in, in 2012, a Lifetime Recognition Award from the Griffin Trust. His literary papers are held by the National Library of Ireland. Early Life of Seamus Hine Here I have quoted some lines from the death of a naturalist who was, uh, which was published in 1966. Wearing a poppy bruise on the left temple, he lay in the four-foot box as in a coat. No gaudy scars, the bumper knocked him clear, a four-foot box, a foot for every year, from mid-jump break. 
Hine was born on 13 April 1939 at the family farmhouse called Mossbourn between Castle Dawson and Tom Bridge. He was the first of nine children. In 1953, his family moved to Balagay, a few miles away, which is now the family home. His father, Patrick Hine, who was died in October 1986, was the eighth child of ten born to James and Sarah Hine. Patrick was a farmer, but his real commitment was to cattle dealing. to which he was introduced by the uncle who had cared for him after the early death of his own parents hines mother margaret kathleen macnan in 19 uh, uh, who was born in 1911 and was died in 1984 who bore nine children came from the macnan family her uncles and relations were employed in the local linen mill and her aunt had worked as a maid for the mill owner's family he ne commented that his parentage contained both the ireland of the cattle herding gaelic past and the ulster of the industrial revolution he considered this to have been a significant tension in his background he ne attended in a horish primary school when he was 12 years old he won a scholarship to st columbus college a roman catholic boarding school in derry hines younger brother christopher was killed in a road accident while hines was studying at st columbus the poems mid term break and the blackbird of the clean moor are related to his brother's death Simon's Hines career I have divided his career in different periods the first period starts from 1957 to 1969 During this period he had done his works Death of a Naturalist and Door into the Dark The most prominent two works um of Simon's Hines In 1957 he had traveled to Belfast to study English language and literature at Queen's University Belfast while there he found a copy of Tate Hogg Lupercal which spurred him spurred him to write poetry Certainly the matter of contemporary poetry was the material of my own life he said he graduated in 1961 with a first class honors degree During teacher training at St Joseph's Teacher Training College in Belfast now merged with uh, St Mary's University College he ne went on a placement to St Thomas Kenry Intermediate School in West Belfast The headmaster of this school was the writer Michael McLeverty from County Monaghan who introduced Hine to the poetry of Patrick Cavanagh with McLeverty uh, McLeverty's uh, mentorship Hine first started to publish poetry in 1962 Sophia Hillan describes how McLeverty was like a foster father to the younger belfast poet in the introduction to mac leverty's collected works he ne summarized the poet's contribution and influence his voice his voice was modestly pitched he never sought the limelight yet for all that his place in our literature is secure he named poem poster age in the sequence singing school from north 1975 is dedicated to him 
In 1963, Hine became a lecturer at St. Joseph's and in the spring of 1963, after contributing various articles to local magazines, he came to the attention of Philip, Philip Hobsbawm. Then an English lecturer at Queen's University, Hobsbawm set up a Belfast group of local young poets to mirror to mirror mirror the success he had with the London group and he never was able to meet other Belfast poets such as Derek Mahon and Michael Longley. In August 1965 he married Mary Dublin, a school teacher and native of Art Boy Country Tyrant also a writer, Devlin published over nine waves in 1994, a collection of traditional Irish myths and legends. Hine's first book, Eleven Poems, was published in November 1965 for the Queen's University Festival. In 1966, Faber and Faber published Death of a Naturalist, his first major volume. This collection was met with much critical acclaim and won several awards, including the Gregory Award for Young Writers and the Jeffrey Faber Prize. Also in 1966, Hine was appointed as a lecturer in modern English literature at Queen's University, Belfast. That year, his first son Michael was born. A second son, Christopher, was born in 1968. That year, Hine and Michael Longley undertook a reading tour called Room to Rhyme, which increased awareness of the poet's work. In 1969, he published his second major volume, Door into the Dark. His second period starts from 1970 to 1984. During this period, Wintering Out, North, a poetry collection, Fieldwork, again a poetry collection, and selected poems uh, which were written during 1965 to 1975. After a spell as guest lecturer at the University of California, Berkeley, Hine returned in 1971 to Queen's University. In 1972, Hine left his lecturership at Belfast, moved to Wicklow in the Republic of Ireland, and began writing on a full-time basis. In the same year, he published Wintering Out. Over the next few years, Hine began to give reading throughout Ireland Great Britain and the United States in 1975. Hine published his fourth volume, North, a pamphlet of prose poems entitled Stations, was published the same year. He became head of English at Carey's Fourth College in Dublin in 1976 and he moved with his family to Sandy Mount in that city. His next volume, Fieldwork, was published in 1979, Selected Poems, 1965 to 1975, and Preoccupations, Selected Prose, 1968 to 1978, were published in 1980. When asked Anna, the National Irish Arts Council was established in 1981. Hine was among those elected into its first group. He was subsequently elected as one of its five elders and its highest honor in 1997. Also in 1981, Hine traveled to the United States as a visiting professor at Howard, 
where he was affiliated with Adams House. He was awarded two honorary doctorates from Queen's University and from Fordham University in New York City in 1982. At the Fordham commencement ceremony on 23 May 1982, Hine delivered his address as a 46 cents a poem entitled Verses for a Fordham Commencement. Born and educated in Northern Ireland, Hine stressed that he was Irish and not British. Following the success of the Field Day Theatre Company's production of Brian Pryle's translations, the founders Brian Pryle and Stephen Ree decided to make the company a permanent group. Hine joined the company's Board of Directors in 1981. In autumn 1984, his mother Margaret died. Third period, which starts from 1985 and, and uh, extends to 1999. During this period, Station Island, Poetry, The Ha Lantern, The Cure at Troy, and the spirit level poetry collection came out. Heaney received a tenure position at Harvard, becoming Boylston, Professor of Rhetoric and Oratory, formerly Visiting Professor, 1985 to 1997, and the Ralph Waldo Emerson Poet in residence at Harvard. In 1998 to 2006, in 1986, Hine received a little deform from Bats College. His father Patrick died in October the same year. The loss of both parents within two years affected Hine deeply, and he expressed his grief in poems. In 1988, a collection of his critical essays, The Government of the Tongue, was published. In 1985, Hine wrote the poem from the Republic of Conscience at the request of Amnesty International Ireland. He wanted to celebrate United Nations Day and the work of Amnesty. The poem inspired the title of Amnesty International's highest honor, the Ambassador of Conscious Award. In 1988, Hine donated his lecture notes to the manuscripts, archive, and rare book library. Marble of Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. After giving the notable Elman lecture in modern liter literature there, in 1989, Hine was elected professor of poetry at the University of Oxford, which he held for a five year term to 1994 means 1990, 1989 to 1994 a period of five years. The chair does not require residence in Oxford throughout this period. He was dividing his time between Ireland and the United States. He also continued to give public readings. So well attended and keenly anticipated were these events that those who cured for tickets with such enthusiasm were sometimes dubbed Hine Boppers, suggesting an almost teeny bopper fan base. In 1990, the cure at Troy, his play based on Sophocles. Philoctetes was published to much acclaim. 
in the next year he published an other volume of poetry which was uh, which which was same things and it was published in 1991 he now was named an honorary patron of the university philosophical society trinity college dublin and was elected an honorary fellow of the royal society of literature in 1991 In 1993 he ne guest edited the May's anthology a collection of new writings from students at the University of Oxford and University of Cambridge that same year he was awarded the Dickinson College Arts Award and returned to Pennsylvania College to deliver the commencement address and receive an honorary degree He was scheduled to return to Dickinson again to receive the Harold and Ethel Lee Stelfox Award for a major literary figure. At the time of his death in 2013, Irish poet Paul Muldoon was named recipient of the award that year, partly in recognition of the close connection between the two poets. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1995 for what the Nobel Committee describes as described as works of lyrical beauty and ethical depth which exalt everyday miracles and the living past. He was on holiday in Greece with his wife when the news broke. Neither journalists nor his own children could reach him until he arrived at Dublin airport two days later although an Irish television camera traced him to Kalamata asked how he felt to have his name added to the Irish Nobel pantheon of W.P. Yeats, George Bernard Shaw and Samuel Beckett. He then responded, it's like being a little foothill at the bottom of a mountain range. You hope you just live up to it. It's extraordinary. He and his his wife Mary were immediately taken from the airport to arrest an Australian for champagne with President Mary Robinson. He would refer to the prize discreetly as the end thing in personal exchange with. exchange with others. He needs 1996 collection the spirit level won the white bread book of the year award. He repeated the success in 1999 with Buell's a new verse translation he was elected a member of the Royal Irish Academy in 1996. and was admitted in 1997. In the same year, Hine was elected soil of Ostana. In 1998, Hine was elected on very fellow of Trinity College, Dublin. The period of 2000 and onward. The Seamus Hine Center for Poetry, which was officially opened at Queen's University, Belfast in 2004. In 2000, Hine was awarded an honorary doctorate and delivered the commencement address at the University of Pennsylvania in 2002. Hine was awarded an honorary doctorate from Rohorse University and delivered a public lecture on the guttural muse. In 2003, the Seamus Heaney Center for Poetry was opened at Queen's University, Belfast. It houses the Heaney Media Archive, a record of Heaney's entire oeuvre along with a full catalog of his radio and television presentation. That same year, 
he had decided to launch a substantial portion of his literary archive at Emory University as a memorial to the work of William M. Cachet, the university's recently retired president. The Emory papers represented the largest repository of Hine's work from 1964 to 2003. He donated these to help build their large existing archive of material from Irish writers including W.B. Yeats, Paul Muldoon, Siren Carson, Michael Longley, and other members of the Belfast group. In 2003, when asked if there was any figure in popular culture who aroused interest in poetry and lyrics, he praised American rap artist Eminem from Detroit saying he has created a sense of what is possible. He has sent a voltage around a generation. He has done this not just through his uh, subversive attitude but also his verbal energy. Hine wrote the poem Beacons at Biltain to mark the 2004 EU enlargement. He read the poem at a ceremony for the 25 leaders of the enlarged European Union arranged by the Irish European Union Presidency. In August 2006, Hine suffered a stroke, although he recovered and joked, blessed are the pacemakers when fitted with a heart monitor, he cancelled all public engagements for several months. He was in County Donegal at the time of the 75th birthday of Anne Fryle wife of playwright Brian Fryle, he read the works of Henning Mankell, Donna Leon and Robert Harris while in hospital. Among his visitors was former President Bill Clinton. Pepper and Faber published Dennis O. Driscoll's book Stepping Stones Interviews with Seamus Heaney in 2008, this has been described as the nearest thing to an autobiography of Heaney. In 2009, Heaney was awarded the David Cohen, uh, David Cohen Prize for Literature. He spoke at the West Belfast Festival 2010 in celebration of his mentor, the poet and novelist Michael McLeverty who had helped Hine to first publish his poetry. In 2010, Faber published Human Chain, Hine's 12th collection. Human Chain was awarded the Forward Poetry Prize for Best Collection, one of the major poetry prizes Hine had never previously won. Despite having been twice shortlisted, the book published 44 years after the poet's first was inspired in part by Hine's stroke in, in 2006, which left him babish and on the brink poet and forward judge Ruth Paddle described the work as a collection of painful, honest, and delicately weighted poems. A wonderful and human achievement, writer Colin Toybin described Human Chain as his best single volume for many years and one that contains some of the best poems he has written. It was a book of shares and memories of things whispered of journeys 
in, into the underworld, allegies, translations, and echoed. Toybin described Human Chain as his best single volume for many years and one that contains some of the best poems he has uh, written is a book of shares and memories of things whispered of journeys into the underworld of allergies and translation of echoes and silences. In October 2010, the collection was shortlisted for the T.S. Eliot Prize. Heine was named one of the Britain's top 300 intellectuals by the Observer in 2011. Though the newspaper later published a correction acknowledging that several individual, individuals who would not claim to be British had been featured, of which Heine was one. Heine's death. Seamus Heaney died in the Black Rock Clinic in Dublin on 30th August 2013 at the age of 74 following a short illness. After a fall outside a restaurant in Dublin, he entered into hospital for a medical procedure but died at 7.30 the following morning before it took place. His funeral was held in Donnybrook, Dublin on the morning of 2nd September 2013 and he was buried in the evening at his home village of Bialagi. In the same graveyard as his parents were buried, younger brothers, young brother and other family members were buried too. His son Michael revealed at the funeral mass at that his father texted his final words Noli Timeo in Latin uh, which translation is to not be a fate. Simultaneous works in order that human beings bring about the most radiant conditions for themselves to inhabit, it is essential that the vision of reality which poetry offers should be tra transformative more than just a printout of the given circumstances of its time and place. The poet who would be the most has to attempt an act of writing that outs outstrips uh, the conditions even as it observes them. From Joy or Night, Last Things in the Poetry of W. B. Yeats and Philip Larkin, W. D. Thomas Memorial Lecture delivered by Seamus Heaney at University College of Swansea on 18 January 1993. Seamus Heaney's Naturalism At one time, Heaney's book made up two-thirds of the sales of living poets in the UK. His work often deals with the local surroundings of Ireland, particularly in Northern Ireland, where he was born and lived until young adulthood. Speaking of his early life and education, he commented, I learned that my local country dairy experience, which I had considered archaic and irrelevant to the modern world, was to be trusted. They taught me that trust and helped me to articulate it. Death of a naturalist in 1966 and door into the dark in 1969 mostly focused on the details of rural Parochial life. In a number of volumes, beginning with Door into the Dark in 1969 and Wintering Out in 1972, Hine also spent a significant amount of time writing on the Northern Irish Bog, particularly a 
नोट इज द कलेक्शन ऑफ वर्क बॉडी पोइम्स इन नॉर्थ इन नाइनटीन सेवेंटी फाइव फीचरिंग मैंगल्ड बॉडीज प्रिजर्व इन द बॉक इन अ रिव्यू बाय सायरन कार्सन इज सेट दैट द बुक पोइम्स मेड हिने इन टू द लॉरीट ऑफ वॉयलेंस a myth maker and anthropologist of ritual killing the world of megalithic doorways and charming noble barbarity poems such as bogland and bog queen addressed political struggles directly for the for the first time simazini's politics allusions to sectarian difference wide spread in northern ireland through his lifetime can be found in his poems his book wintering uh, wintering out in 1973 and north in 1975 seek to interweave commentary on the troubles with a historical context and wider human experience while some critics accused hine of being an apologist and a mythologist mythologizer mythologizer of the violence black morrison suggests the poet has written poems directly about the troubles as well as elegies for friends and acquaintances who have died in them he has tried to discover a historical framework in which to interpret the current unrest and he has taken on the mantle of public spokesman someone look to for to for comment and guidance simas hines translation he was concerned as a poet and a translator with the english language as it is spoken in ireland but also as spoken some some way uh, some elsewhere and in other times he explored anglo-saxon influences in his work and study critic w s d pyro noted whatever the occasion childhood farm life politics and culture in northern ireland other poets past and present he may strike time and again at the tap root of language examining its genetic structures trying to discover how it has served in all its change changes as a culture barrier a world to contain imaginations at once a radical weapon and nutriment of spirit He writes of these matters with real discrimination and resourcefulness, and a winning impatience with received wisdom. Hines' first translation was of the Irish lyric poem "Billy Suibene," published as "Vinnie Astre," a version from the Irish in 1984. He took up this character and connection in poems published in Station Island in 1984. Hines prize winning translation of Beowulf, Ferrer, Strauss and Giroux's 2000 Widespread Book of the Year award was considered groundbreaking in its use of modern lang- uh, modern language melded with the original Anglo-Saxon music. Simas Hines plays and prose His plays include The Cure at Troy a version of Sophocles Philoctetes in 1991 Hines 2004 play The Burial at Thebes suggests parallels between Creon and the foreign policies of the Bush administration Hines engagement with poetry as an accessory in engine for cultural and personal change is reflected in his prose works the redress of poetry in 
and finders keepers selected pros in 1971 2001 and 2002 when a poem rhymes he wrote when a form generates itself when a meter provoke consciousness into new postures it is already on the side of life when a rhyme surprises and extends the fixed relations between words that in itself protests against necessity when language does more than enough as it does in all archived uh, sorry in all achieved poetry it opts for the condition of over life and rebels at limit He continues, the vision of reality which poetry offers should be transformative, more than just a print out of the given circumstances of its time and place, often overlooked and under underestimated in the direction of his work is his profound poetic debts to and critical engagements with 20th century Eastern European poets, and in particular Nobel laureate. Seamus Heaney's Legacy The Seamus Heaney home place in Balagi is a literature and art center which com commemorates Heaney's legacy. In November 2019, the documentary Seamus Heaney and the Music of What Happens was aired on BBC Two. His wife Mary and his children talked about their family life and read some of the poems he wrote for them. For the first time, he and his four brothers remembered their childhood and the shared experiences that inspired many of his finest poems. Seamus Heaney's major publications Poetry's main collections Death of a Naturalist, published by Faber and Faber in 1966 Door into the Dark Again published by Faber and Faber in 1969. Wintering Out published by Faber and Faber in 1972. North Faber and Faber in 1975. Fieldwork published by Faber and Faber in 1979. Station Island published by Faber and Faber in 1984. The Ha Lantern published by Faber and Faber in 1987. Same Things by Faber and Faber in 1991, The Spiritual Level by Faber and Faber in 1996, Electric Light by Faber and Faber in 2001, District and Circle by Faber and Faber in 2006, Human Chain by Faber and Faber in 2010. While we talk about selected editions of poetry, Selected poems from 1965 to 1975, published in 1980 by Faber and Faber. New selected poems from 1966 to 1987 were published by Faber and Faber in 1990. Open ground poems from 1966 to 1996, published by Faber and Faber in 1998. New selected poems wrote during 1988 to 2013 were published by Faber and Faber in 2014, 100 poems by Faber and Faber in 2018. And while we talk about the main collections of prose work, the preoccupations selected prose were it, was written in 1968 to 1978 published by Faber and Faber in 1980, The Government of the Tongue by Faber and Faber in 1988. So that's all. This lecture almost includes the introduction of Seamus Heaney, his initial life, uh, about his uh, a brief sketch of his family, their uh, initial businesses, uh, his career, his translations, his prose work, his plays, his recognitions, his awards, his legacy, and his major publications. Thank you so much.